Welcome to today's service from Youthobeth, Trinity, Gask and Glencairn Parish Church. This is the service for the 7th of June. The hymns we're going to be singing today are Love Divine, Jesus Loves Me, Shine, Jesus Shine. The scripture reading is from 1 John chapter 4, 7-18, and will be read by Sandy Bain. A talk this week is by the Reverend Alec Mitchell, who is also leading us in the prayers. Hope you enjoy the service. The reading this week is from 1st John chapter 4 verses 7 to 18. Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but the unloving know nothing of God. For God is love and his love was disclosed to us in this that he sent his only Son into the world to bring us life. The love I speak of 
is not our love for God, but the love he showed to us in sending his Son as the remedy for the defilement of our sins. If God thus loved us, dear friends, we in turn are bound to love one another. Though God has never been seen by any man, God himself dwells in us. If we love one another, his love is brought to perfection within us. Here is the proof that we dwell in him and he dwells in us. He has imparted his spirit to us. Moreover, we have seen for ourselves and we attest that the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. And if a man acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he dwells in God. Thus we have come to know and believe the love which God has for us. God is love. He who dwells in love is dwelling in God, and God in him. This is for us the perfection of love, to have confidence in the day of judgment. And this we can have, because even in this world, we are as he is. There is no room for fear in love. Perfect love banishes fear. For fear brings, it, brings with it the pains of judgment. And anyone who is afraid has not attained to love in its perfection. Amen. May God bless to us this reading of his holy word, and to his name be the glory and praise. Good morning. I'm Alec from Mutho Parish Church, a member of the church and a retired minister for those who don't know me. And I'm just very happy to be able to contribute to the ongoing ministry of Mutho Church during this period of lockdown. Let me test your memory. An old song that you might remember. And the words of this song go, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing 
there's just too little of. That song was sung by Jackie DeShannon in 1965. Yes, 1965. And 55 years later, we, surely we can still echo those words. The world still needs love. By whatever measure we use, there is just not enough love in the world. Now that's not to deny the practical love that's been shown right throughout this pandemic. Whether it's our healthcare workers, our home carers, our neighbours, frontline workers going above and beyond the call of duty. Many ordinary people have made sacrifices in order to benefit the greater good of society. In Muthog, we've used the, the, the old phone box has been used as a resource centre for food and for other goods that people can share um, in time of need. Just this week we had our farmers, a beautiful, fantastic cavalcade of 40 tractors going through our streets in support of the NHS. Yes, there has been a lot of love shown during this pandemic. Yet, there's also been a growth in selfishness, antisocial behaviour, misinformation, backbiting, bluster, injustice, and of course a great deal of suffering for many. Where is God in all of this? People ask that question. And from reports up and down our land, many are looking online for answers. Many are signing up to do the online Alpha course, higher numbers than ever before. Churches are reporting that far more people are watching their online service than would normally attend in person. Where is God in all of this? The disciple John, in his first letter, makes this astounding statement in chapter 4, verse 8. God is love. He not only says that God loves, but he says even further, he goes even further in saying that God is love. That love lies at the centre, the very essence of the being of the Lord God. The Lord acts in love because his being and his motivation is love. We're well aware that if someone is filled with anger, if anger is what dominates their life, then it comes out in angry outbursts. Or if someone is what we would call filled with pride, then it overflows in self-promotion, putting other people down. If someone is filled with love, then their motivation, their actions are surely guided by love. As a former engineer, I know that all works of construction have to start from a fixed point, have to start from a known place. You can't measure or construct something unless you start from a given point, a known point, and work outwards and upwards from there. For thousands of years, people have been building houses or temples or public buildings. And they start with a cornerstone, a known point, and then they work outwards and upwards from there. And God is love is that starting point for us in the Christian faith. 
Now, no one seems to deny that Jesus was a loving person. His actions in caring, healing, sharing, looking for the outcast, speaking words of forgiveness, dying in such a public way and in an unjust manner, and yet without blaming others, but asking for their forgiveness. And yet the same Jesus was 100% loyal to his Father God, seeking to fulfil his will and his purpose for him on earth. John 3.16 is perhaps one of the best known verses in the Bible. And this was first spoken to Nicodemus, a well-educated um, Pharisee, but who was a secret follower of Jesus. Someone who knew the Old Testament well, and yet didn't seem to have grasped one of its central truths. The verse is, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. You see, the idea that God is love does not, doesn't come from the New Testament, but it's in the pages of the Old Testament as well. 250 times in the Old Testament, God is described as loving. 250 times in the Old Testament, the word hesed, a Hebrew word, is used to describe God's faithful love. And that love is a commitment to his people in words and in actions. But then the word love, like many other words in our language, changes its meaning depending on how it is used and what you actually invest in it. Love can be simply a passing feeling, a fleeting emotion. It could be lust. It can be a strong bond between siblings or friends. It can be a loyal commitment expressed in marriage. It can be caring actions and it can be in giving yourself to help other people. When they came to write the New Testament in Greek, they had a choice of four words in the Greek language which would express the word love. But they chose uh, to use a word in Greek, agape, which simply means self-giving love. A love that had been revealed in to us in Jesus. Self-giving. We put it on our war memorials. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now you see, love in our understanding of God's love for us. Love never enslaves or imprisons the object of its love. God gives us free will to live our lives separately from his love. Like the prodigal son, we can choose to live in the far country, far away from our father's love. Love to be, to be love has to run the risk of being spurned by the very object of its love. Love in the Bible always has a practical outworking. Verse 11 in our reading says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. The disciple John who wrote these words didn't come to this conclusion primarily by theological study or philosophical thought. 
but because he knew Jesus. Because love is a relationship word. You can only know and experience love in a relationship with another person. And similarly, God's love is known through a relationship of faith with Jesus Christ. It's like rising in the morning and saying, Lord, walk with me today. Let me journey with you today. So where is God in this pandemic? Is he still acting in love? Yes, but he doesn't override human free will or culpability. Does that mean that because of the actions of others, the innocent suffer? Unfortunately, yes. Yet in whatever situation in life we find ourselves, Wherever we're, wherever we're at at this juncture in our life, we can know the assurance that God loves us. I was in Rwanda in 2014 on the 20th anniversary of that terrible genocide in that land with 800,000 to a million people uh, killed in a hundred days. While I was there, we heard amazing stories of people who were delivered miraculously from the carnage. But we also heard stories of ordinary, loving, caring people who weren't delivered, but who were killed through it. Does it mean that God loved one and not the other? No, it doesn't. Corrie ten Boom walked out of Ravensbrück concentration camp after suffering all the horrors of that place. And she spent the remainder of her life writing and speaking, telling whoever would hear, there is no pit too deep that God's love is deeper still. Yes, the world needs love, sweet love. It's not emotional, or sentimental love, but the sure and the certain love that God has revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, we thank you for your sure and certain love revealed to us through Jesus, your Son. In a world with so many certainties, so many fixed points being eroded, we thank you that we can hold on to that certainty of our faith that God is love. Lord, we thank you that your love is revealed to us in so many practical ways, the changing of the seasons, the provision of food, peaceful homes, prosperous communities, hope in the midst of chaos and life beyond death. We thank you that we look to and follow a loving Saviour in Jesus Christ a good shepherd who looks after his sheep, a willing sacrifice, giving up his life for his friends, a forgiving saviour. O Lord, we confess our shortcomings in loving others. It has been easy to pass by on the other side when we have seen someone in need. Easy to distance ourselves from the pain, suffering and injustice that so many experience in this world. Lord, 
forgive us for our sins. Forgive us when we take for granted those who love us, those who are closest to us. Forgive us when we fail to show the love of Jesus to a needy world. Forgive us, Lord, when we are selective in any way with our love. Lord, forgive us for our sins. Lord, for other shortcomings that we may have that you challenge us about. Lord, we thank you for all who act in love in these challenging days. For those who go beyond the call of duty to help others. For those who in so many practical ways are helping their neighbours and their communities. Lord, we thank you for our nearest and dearest. For all who enrich our lives with their love and care. Lord, may we be a society, a church, a family who love and care for one another. Lord, help your church, even in these difficult days, to show and demonstrate, to proclaim the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, we pray for our world, a world much in need of love in these turbulent days. We pray for our political leaders, for advisors and decision makers. Lord, help them to lead with wisdom and compassion. We pray for our police tasked with keeping law and order while keeping the trust of the society they serve. We pray for our health care workers, for home carers, for those who work in our nursing homes. Lord, for all who seek to care for the needs of others, Lord, we ask your blessing and your strength to continue with them and may they continue to act in love. Lord, we pray for the United States at this difficult time when there are so many hurts and divisions appearing across that great nation. Lord, have mercy upon them. May justice, peace and love apply to all of its society and its people. Lord, for our world in its great needs, for all who are hungry, for all who are imprisoned unjustly, for all who need your loving care at this time. Lord, we pray. Lord, as we reach out to you, journey with us. If any of our loved ones are in the far country, Lord, bring them home. If any are journeying through the valley of the shadow of death, lead them safely to your nearer presence. O oh Lord, we bring you these our prayers in and through our loving Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>